So in our series of lectures on basic electronics, learning by doing, let us move on to the next lecture. Before we do, as usual, we will look at topics that we learnt during the previous lecture. You might recall that we discussed the basic principle of integrated circuits, how integrated circuits are developed, formed, and then operational amplifiers, some of the characteristics of an ideal and a typical amp operational amplifier and the concept of feedback and we also derived an expression for the gain one of an amplifier with negative feedback which is one of the very important aspects of electronics. Now let us before we move on to the next topic, it will be good to recall the typical characteristics of the operational amplifier once more, both the ideal and a typical op amp which is a very popular one 741. So if you look at the open loop gain which is called AOL, the symbol, the screen, the ideal op amp has got infinite gain, very large gain, whereas a typical 741 has got a gain of 100,000 which also is a very large number. If you look at the unity gain frequency, you can that means it corresponds to a bandwidth with gain 1, you would find the in for an ideal operation amplifier it is again infinity and for 741 it is 1 megahertz 10 to the power of 6 hertz. So from 0 to 10 to the power of 6 hertz the amplifier will have reasonably constant gain of about 1. The input resistance if I look at it for an ideal op amp it is again infinite and infinite and if for an operational amplifier typical operational amplifier 741 it is about 2 mega ohms typically. Similarly output resistance is 0 for an ideal op amp and about 75 ohms are around that for a typical operational amplifier which you buy from the market. So you can see most of the numbers are really very close between the ideal and the actual op amp. There are other characteristics that also we saw we did not discuss in detail about them we will perhaps do it in the course of next or uh, couple of lectures. The input bias current which also should be 0 and it typically it is about 80 nanoamperes. input offset current that is also 0 ideally but it is about 20 nanoamperes a small value and input offset voltage is 0 but it is about 2 millivolt for typical op amp and the common mode rejection ratio we discussed this in some detail when we discussed about differential amplifiers and the common mode rejection ratio is an ability to distinguish between common signals and differential signals at the input of any difference amplifier. The op amp input stage being a difference amplifier we have to worry about the common mode rejection ratio of that and you know ideally it should be very large CMRR infinity and in an actual case it should be 90 dB and I am sure you can immediately recognize 90 dB should be more than about 10,000 more than 10,000 is the voltage gain for difference differential input to common mode input. The gain AD by AC is what is called a CMRR and that is nearly 10,000 10 power for 10,000 and large. 
we also saw in the previous lecture about negative feedback how negative feedback is very important for control applications and in an amplifier when we say negative feedback what we mean by that we take a portion of the output voltage and feed it back at the input and when we feed it back we try to feed it back at opposing phase not in phase with the input signal and therefore it is called a negative feedback. So this negative feedback we, if you recall we derived an expression for the gain with negative feedback V output by V input V output by V input the negative feedback is inside the amplifier and therefore that new gain I call that AF which is the gain with feedback. So this is related to the intrinsic gain A of the amplifier by this expression which we derived last time also I have shown here the mathematical steps. So AF the gain with feedback is equal to the gain without feedback A divided by 1 plus A beta where beta is called the feedback ratio what is the proportion of the output voltage which is given at the input this is called feedback ratio it is usually less than 1 and so A beta will be a very large number right when uh, if you in an ideal case when you have A tending to infinity limit A tending to infinity this expression will become 1 by beta that I also explained to you last time limit A tending to infinity this will uh, reduce to 1 by beta and that means beta is in the hands of the user of the op amp he can choose proper network for the feedback by which you will be able to completely decide the property or the behavior of the amplifier by using the external resistors capacitors that is why we want to have as high a gain as possible for the operational amplifier that is why we want to have the gain of the amplifier to be around 100,000 or more in the ideal case it is infinity because then it becomes very convenient the characteristics of the op amp itself is not the deciding factor but the external resistors components that I use for the feedback network I can control and thereby I can control the behavior of the amplifier this is a very important concept and you would see in this lecture and the next one also I will keep stressing about this point and I will show you how this comes about. So let us look at the some of the important thing I, I generally mentioned about feedback negative feedback that means a portion of the output is connected in phase opposition to the input that does not tell you what is it that I sense at the output and what is it that I give at the input I send something from the output and a portion of it I give at the input now you have several choices for example the output I can sense the voltage the output voltage and feed it back as also a portion of a voltage at the input. So I can sense a voltage and give a voltage at the input a poor fraction of that voltage in phase opposition. The other way I can sense a voltage and give it as a current at the input or I can sense the current at the output and give it as a voltage or why. So you can see there are four different ways in which I can take a portion of the output and give it at the input these four different configurations of feedback is what is very important for us to learn about in this case and I have shown you in this picture on the screen the four different configurations. For example in the first one you sense the voltage because you are connecting them your beta the feedback network you connect in parallel to the output points and therefore you are actually sensing the voltage at the output point. So you sense the voltage and you give also a voltage here in series with the input terminals of the amplifier therefore voltage series is what some people call this type of a feedback voltage sensed and given in series. If you look at the second picture you can see the, the voltage is again taken here because it is taken in parallel at the output and it is also given at the at in parallel at the input terminals therefore the input voltage at the ter terminals of the in amplifier and the feedback voltage are actually connect in parallel the two networks are in parallel therefore this is a shunt so voltage given as a shunt at the input so this is a second configuration similarly you can sense the volt the current in series 
if I put something in series the same output current will have to flow through the beta network also and therefore this is a series connection whereas in the other case it is a parallel connection you connect in parallel to the output impedance of the amplifier the network also in parallel and therefore this is a series connection if I connect a series then the current is a constant in a series circuit voltage is constant in a parallel circuit we have seen that also. So this series uh, current generates a voltage and that voltage is fed back at the input. So this is called current connected as a voltage in series and the other one you sense again the current and give it as a in parallel therefore in shunt. So current shunt feedback. So you have four different types of feedback configurations possible for a given amplifier voltage amplifier like an op amp. So in an op amp we can implement these four different types of feedback circuits all of them correspond to negative feedback and all of them will correspond to a very good nice circuit which is very useful for several applications we will see it now. So what I am now going to do is take one by one each of these feedback configurations and try to explain to you what is the consequence of this feedback configuration on the output effective output resistance of the amplifier and the effective input resistance of the amplifier. So you have to rem you remember that every amplifier can be drawn as an equivalent circuit with an input resistance Ri and an output resistance R0 in series with a voltage source which is actually AOL times V epsilon. This is a kind of voltage source which is taking care of the gain factor of the amplifier which is in this case the open loop gain. I have not shown this because I am trying to look at in terms of the Thevenin's equivalent circuit and therefore the voltage source is short here and what you see here is only the output impedance R0. Now I take a equivalent network of resistance here at the feedback network I can always look at it as a some resistance R of O which is the feedback network uh, resistance of the feedback network and I am sensing the voltage in parallel therefore the same voltage V0 is also applied across this RFO and uh, by some potential divider or something I take an effective voltage at the output and that output I give in this configuration with a phase inversion you can see this is plus minus this is plus minus. So whatever is the input voltage that input voltage the entire voltage will not be applied here because they are connected in series you can see this is like connecting two batteries in series. So V e epsilon plus V f is what is equal to V in therefore what is V epsilon which is the voltage exactly connected at the input is going to be V in minus this V f therefore already you can see the because of the feedback the input voltage is decreased V in is larger than V epsilon that means all the input voltage that you connect is not applied at the input. Uh, terminals of the amplifier op amp because some has been neutralized by the feedback voltage Vf that I have taken. So voltage is sensed in parallel at the output because of that now if this is the oral which is the load resistance at the end of the amplifier this load can be anything it can be a loudspeaker or it can be something which you want to drive after amplification. Now if I look from that end the output resistance end and look into the amplifier what you would observe you would observe two different resistors coming in parallel one is the output resistance of the amplifier and the other one is the output resistance as seen as a Thevenin resistance of the beta the network that you have connected for the feedback. So these two resistors when you connect in parallel you know what is going to happen the effective resistance is going to be the parallel value of these two resistors you know the parallel combination of two resistors is always less than the smallest in that group. So you can never get R0 you will always get a value which is less than R0 effective resistance. So the effect of connecting in parallel a feedback network is to reduce the output impedance that is what I want you to understand when I connect the any network in parallel to the input you will always get a effective resistance at the output reduced okay now let us see what happens so r o effective is parallel value of r o and r f o which r f o is a feedback network then r o effective is always less than 
R O the output resistance of the amplifier. Similarly if I look at the input voltage is connected in series with the input signal and therefore what I get will be less than the actual applied input because some feedback voltage will reduce some of the magnitude. So R I effective the input resistance is the sum of this plus this they are coming in series therefore the total resistance will be the sum of the input resistance of the amplifier and the input resistance of the network together. So what is going to happen it will, the in effective resistance because of the feedback will always be larger than Ri alone without feedback. So the effect of feedback network at the output resistance when I sense voltage in parallel at the output is to reduce the output resistance. The effect of connecting the voltage in series at the input is to increase the input resistance. So if an amplifier has got increased input resistance and decreased output resistance what will be the type of an amplifier? For an ideal voltage amplifier the input impedance should be very large we have seen it number of times the input impedance of an ideal voltage source should be very large so that the entire signal is applied across the amplifier very small fraction is dropped inside the source resistance therefore if I have a very large input resistance due to the, this configuration the input will have to be a voltage and therefore I connect a voltage here and what I get at the output is a decrease in the resistance due to feedback output resistance whenever there is a decrease that means it becomes much closer to an ideal voltage source and therefore the output will be able to drive any kind of load any magnitude of the load that means this has to be a voltage source only a voltage source will have a least internal resistance and therefore you have the reduction in resistance due to this configuration makes the output more and more closer to a voltage source and the feedback that is given at the input makes the input higher resistance input resistance higher and therefore uh, that makes it much more useful as a voltage amplifier therefore the input is a voltage output is also a voltage the output voltage is controlled by the input therefore this configuration is called voltage controlled voltage source the output is a voltage source because the output impedance is decreased due to the feedback and therefore it is controlled by the input voltage therefore this configuration is called voltage controlled voltage source by some people okay. In the same way we can argue for each of the configurations that I showed you four different configuration for example here I have again sensing is done in parallel voltage sensed in parallel and therefore the effective resistance is the parallel value of R1 and RFO which is in principle effectively to reduce the output impedance of this combination and therefore the output resistance is reduced here and if you look at the input it is different from the previous thing here I am giving it in shunt I am actually connecting the voltage in parallel to the input voltage of the terminals of the amplifier. So when I have two power resistors in parallel you know the effective resistance is going to be small so it is no more a voltage input because if it is a voltage input I must have large input resistance then only it can be a voltage input. Now the effect of this feedback is to reduce the input resistance and therefore the input will have to be a current it is no more V in it has to be I in. So the input is going to be a current the output resistance is decreased therefore the output is going to be still a voltage source and therefore it is a current controlled voltage source that is what we get when I give a feedback of this nature and this also called incidentally current to voltage converter you would find we can get a very nice current to voltage converter by making this type of a feedback configuration using our op amp at a later stage. Now let us move on to the next uh, circuit here you, you see here the voltage is actually not sensed you will sense the voltage when you take the output in parallel but you are taking the output in series therefore you are actually sensing the IO the output current is being sensed here and if you sense the output current you are connecting it in series to the output 
and therefore the effective output impedance is increased as you can see here. This R0 and RFO will come in series therefore the effective resistance is larger than RO alone. Though due to feedback the output impedance is increased. If an output increase output or impedance is increased then the output should be a current source because only for a current source the internal resistance is very high. If a internal resistance of this amplifier at the output is having a higher resistance that means it is becoming more a current source. If you look at the input it is very similar to the first configuration we saw we are giving the feedback voltage in series with the terminals and therefore the effect is to reduce the effective input voltage connected to the amplifier and therefore this will increase the effective input resistance because here also it is coming in series and therefore when I connect two resistors in series the effective resistance should be larger and therefore yeah, resistance is increased at the inputs resistance is also increased at the output. The increase in resistance makes sure that what we apply will be a voltage uh, the increased resistance at the output shows that it has to be a current which is being driven at the output to, through the load and therefore this is a voltage to current converter it is a basically the circuit becomes a voltage to current converter or in another way you can call it as a voltage controlled current source. The current source will be controlled by whatever voltage that you connect here. So this becomes a voltage controlled current source which is the third uh, configuration. Now we come to the last configuration the fourth configuration where you see the feedback voltage is to be obtained by sensing the output in series and therefore again it is going to be increased resistance at the output stage and therefore it has to be a current source at the output. At the input I again connect it in parallel to the input terminal and therefore the effective resistance is the parallel value of Ri and Rfi which is always small therefore effective input resistance is decreased. When the effective input resistance is decreased then it has to be the current which is should be driving the input rather than the voltage one for therefore this is a current input here and you also get a current output here because the output impedance is also increased. So this is a current amplifier you give some current here you get an higher current at the output so it becomes a current amplifier and it is also called current controlled current source. The output current source is controlled by the input current that you drive through the input terminals and therefore this feedback leads to a circuit which is a current controlled current source. Now having seen all the four different configuration I have put it them in the form of a table to show you in a nutshell how it is all for the for example in the first configuration it was the voltage at the input you also got a voltage at the output because it was a closer to a voltage source due to the feedback and it is called a voltage controlled voltage source ideally a voltage controlled voltage source should have infinite resistance at the input it should have zero resistance at the output in our case the input resistance was increased because of the series connection of the feedback and the output voltage is decreased because we are taking that in parallel to the feedback network. So this is a V to V converter in the second circuit you have a parallel connection and therefore the input resistance is reduced and therefore it becomes a current drive and that the output is again the voltage because you are sensing it in parallel and therefore it is a current controlled voltage source and an ideal current controlled voltage source should have zero input resistance and zero output resistance and it becomes a I to V converter. The third circuit is a V at the input I at the output it becomes a voltage controlled input source and it will have infinite resistance at the input corresponding to voltage and it will have a infinite resistance at the output corresponding to a current source and therefore it becomes a voltage to current converter or V2I circuit. The last one is basically current controlled current source and ICIS and it will have high input zero input impedance and very high output impedance and it becomes a current controlled current source right. In an actual case when we discuss with a normal op amp these four configurations I would like to discuss then you would find each one of them will turn out to be a very nice amplifier almost an ideal uh, circuit first one will be an voltage amplifier second one will be a trans resistance amplifier because the transfer function has got dimensions of 
resistance. Output voltage by input current gives me resistance therefore, this is a trans resistance amplifier and the third circuit is going to be a conductance. I output divided by V in voltage by current is resistance, current by voltage is conductance therefore, this is a 1 by R value I will get for I out by V in which I call G m and this is a trans conductance amplifier which is also very very useful in different applications. And the last one is a current amplifier and the ratio you appears to be the same as what you get in the first case for the voltage amplifier 1 plus R 1 by R 2 we will take different configurations I will explain to you what is this R 1 R 2 where from it comes. But this is in general the four different circuits that you get from a single op amp by simply connecting one or two resistors in the feedback network. So, that is the greatest advantage and you can see this voltage amplifier, transconductance amplifier, trans resistance amplifier, current amplifier are almost very close to an ideal current source, current voltage, current amplifier, voltage amplifier, voltage current source etcetera because of the very good characteristics of the op amp in the integrated circuit form that is why we discuss about that in detail. So, having done that background on the negative feedback how different configurations can be connected and all that let us focus on one of the op amp which is very popular which is very easy and not uh, very expensive it is very cheap you can buy in the market for about a 10 rupees or so and therefore, this is the 741 operational amplifier. In fact, it is what in 1965 a company called Fairchild semiconductor introduced the mu A709 as their first operational amplifier which was very widely used, but it had several disadvantages in terms of frequency compensation and all that and therefore, we they brought out a more improved design of the same and which they called mu A741 and, and it is very easy and inexpensive to use and therefore, this has become a great success many people use this for different you have hundreds of different types of operational amplifier to be used at different situations. So, we will have a look at that at some stage now if you look at the 741 itself it has got different specification for example, you can buy a 741 you can also buy a 741 C you would find 741 C will be cheaper than 741. 741E, 741N, etc. This C, E, N have got some meaning with reference to the um, temperature ranges for which the operational amplifier can be convened to operator or on the basis of the noise levels and things like that. So, for example, 741C is a commercial operational amplifier and therefore, they will uh, be suitable for only a small range of temperatures from 0 to 75 degree centigrade and all that. If you go for a military specification for example, then the same op amp will have to be manufactured for much stringent variations that means, much larger range of temperature variation from minus 50 degrees to plus 120 degree and things like that and that becomes a military specification and so it will automatically be more expensive because more care has to be uh, put in the design of such op amps. So, they become more expensive but most of the time we will be discussing only the 741C which is the cheap inexpensive operational amplifier easily available in the local market. You also have the same 741 manufactured by different manufacturers even though it was a Fairchild who started the first manufacturing of 741 many other people also started manufacturing the same operational amplifier almost with identical characteristics. For example, LM 741 is actually op amp manufactured and commercialized by national semiconductors. MC741 is a operation amplifier managed manufactured by Motorola company and SN72741 is again a operation amplifier with the 741 again coming there uh, manufactured by Texas instruments like that there are different types of manufacturers uh, device manufacturers were manufacture, but all of them will have almost typical similar characteristics. So, on people normally leave out this specification of the manufacturer LM or mu A or MC and they only specify 741. So, when I say 741 it could be from any manufacturer it should have very similar characteristics. Okay, now, having looked at the operation amplifier let us now take one simple configuration of the operation amplifier. You can see you have 
this symbol of an operation amplifier, we normally do not show the dual supply which I already explained to you in the previous lecture corresponding to V plus and V minus and you have the input signal connected to the plus and there is a feedback that is given here. The feedback is a very simple configuration here. I just put a potential divider at the output R1 by R1 R2 and take the midpoint and connect it to the input. So, what I have effectively done is I have divided the output voltage into two parts one across R1 and one across R2 and the voltage developed across R2 is applied in series with the input voltage you can see in phase opposition and therefore, what you can get here will be a reduced voltage that is the effect of feedback we have already discussed. And therefore, what is this V2 or Vf which we normally call Vf is nothing but R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V output this is the RL this is the V output. So, you have taken that by sensing the output voltage and therefore, this is the feedback that you are giving. The, the most of the op amps have very large gain extremely large gain and very high input impedance R in and very low output impedance even without any feedback. For example, the 741C has a 100,000 I already gave you the typical table R input is about 2 mega ohm and R output is 75 ohm. But now what is going to happen with the feedback we will try to understand. So, what you have here the is the v feedback voltage V f or V 2 in this case is R 2 divided by R 1 plus R 2 times V output and this R 2 divided by R 1 plus R 2 is effectively the beta that we represented in our other circuits. We always said the feedback ratio the feedback ratio here is beta it is always less than 1 you can see. So, beta beta V 2 is beta times V out right we have assumed we R 2 and R 1 only are existing all the other things are not existing. We have an input resistance here etcetera therefore, if there is an assumption here and the assumption is that R input of the amplifier is very much larger than R 2 and therefore, it is the R 2 which decides everything when they come in parallel. So, this is also true most of the times otherwise you have to use a very rigorous expression for beta which is R 2 parallel R in divided by R 1 plus R 2 parallel R in to take care of the parallel value of R 2 and R in right. So, the error voltage to the amplifier what I mean by error voltage is the actual voltage or the difference in voltage between the input voltage and the feedback voltage is what I call error voltage and which is the exact voltage which is applied across the input terminals of the operation amplifier circuit. So, V epsilon I call that V epsilon is nothing but V 1 minus V 2 we will go back and look at the V 1 minus V 2 is what I have here. So, V 1 minus V 2 is because it is negative feedback it is minus V 2. So, V 1 minus V 2 is V epsilon and that V 1 is V input itself V 1 is basically the input voltage coming from the source V 2 is beta times V output because it is a feedback voltage. So, if I now substitute that V output is equal to A times V epsilon because the A is the open loop gain without any feedback that will only amplify the voltage applied across its input terminals which is V epsilon we know that. So, A times V epsilon is the output voltage and instead of V epsilon we can write that is nothing but V input minus beta times V output just now we saw and therefore, when you rearrange you find V output by V in a by 1 plus a beta which is again the same circuit for the same equation we got previously for any feedback negative feedback amplifier. Okay. The product a beta is actually called the loop gain for a non inverting voltage feedback this is a non inverting voltage feedback to be affected the designer must deliberately make the loop gain very much larger than 1 which is also true in our case because a is going to be 100,000 beta is going to be maybe 0.5 or something whatever it is the number becomes very large and therefore, a beta is very large compared to 1 and therefore, v output v n then it will become almost equal to 1 by beta and beta is this case you know because we have used a simple potential divider beta is r 2 divided by 1 1 plus r 1 plus r 2 and 1 by beta is a reverse of this inverse of this which is r 1 plus r 2 by r 2 which can be rewritten as 1 plus r 1 by r 2. So, this is 1 by beta and this is the 
V output by V in which we call the gain of the effective amplifier with feedback. So, the amplifier gain with feedback is 1 plus R 1 by R 2 and you can see this is independent of A the gain of the operational amplifier this is the greatest advantage that we get. And R 1 and R 2 are the two resistors that I V select in the lab depending upon the convenience and therefore, we can very easily change this and change the gain of the amplifier. So, it becomes very very convenient to increase or decrease the gain by simply changing two resistors R 1 and R 2 by using a very effective negative feedback configuration that we discussed. So, that is the advantage of this. You also should recognize that people tend to write circuits in different ways show in different ways, but you would find you must be able to recognize, but they are of the same configuration. For example, these two circuits that I have shown on the screen appears as though they are two different circuits, but if you carefully observe they are two identical circuits. You can see that the negative end is actually used for the feedback R 2 and the R 1 is connected to ground. Therefore, this is R 2 plus R 1 which is connected in the feedback loop and that is connected to the negative point therefore, there is a negative feedback. The same thing the way we showed just now is R 1 R 2 put at the output as a potential divider and the middle point is connected to V minus. So, this and this are exactly identical we have only interchanged the amplifier flip the amplifier about an horizontal axis by 180 degrees. So, this is V in here also the V in is connected to the plus terminal here also the plus terminal and the output voltage is measured across the output terminal of the amplifier. So, these two configurations are identical in books you would find some people show it like this some people do it like this it does not matter as long as they have given the negative feedback correctly and they were applying the input at the plus terminal and measuring the output corresponding to the output terminal right. Having seen that let us just quickly take a simple example of a 741C which has got 100,000 gain what is the closed loop gain if V in is equal to 1 millivolt what do the output error voltage equal. So, in this case the resistors values are given it is 2 kilo ohm and 98 kilo ohm. So, beta will be R 1 is 2 kilo ohm R 2 is 98 kilo ohm. So, T kilo ohm by 100 kilo ohms that is equal to 0.02 that is a beta factor. So, the smaller the beta 1 by beta will be much larger it will be 50. So, the closed loop gain is 1 by beta and that is around 50 for this circuit. That means, the closed loop gain is 100,000 A divided by plus 1 plus A beta which is also 49.975 very close to 50 and therefore, you see whatever way whichever expression you use ultimately the correct number comes out. So, Therefore, we say 1 by beta is a good enough approximation for the closed loop voltage of an amplifier that uses non inverting voltage feedback. And this is called a non inverting voltage amplifier because as you can see the input is given to plus terminal and between the output and the input there is no phase difference. Therefore, the output will be in phase to the input and therefore, it is called a non inverting amplifier. If I have to give to the negative terminal of the input for the up amp there will be a phase difference between the input and output. In this case there is no phase difference therefore, it is called non inverting amplifier. A non inverting amplifier is almost close to an ideal voltage amplifier. So, if V in is equal to 1 millivolt the output voltage is gain closed loop gain multiplied by V in 50 multiplied 1 millivolt you get 50 millivolt. And so, what is the voltage that is exactly applied at the input this is a 50 millivolts is output voltage. So, if I divide that by 100,000 I will get the V epsilon the voltage which is exactly applied at the input terminals of the op amp that is found to be 0.5 micro volt you can see that. So, it is a very very small voltage that is only applied out of the 1 millivolt there is only 0.5 micro volt applied across the input terminals. So, the same configuration is shown here to bring about a idea to you that this not only even though the gain has decreased from 100,000 to 50 in the previous example for example typically, but you do not have to worry I already mentioned to you this decrease in gain comes out as an increase in features 
corresponding to a good amplifier like the input resistance, output resistance, bandwidth, distortion uh, etcetera. Therefore, what it is e amounting to is that the gain of the feedback, gain of the amplifier becomes something like a deposit in a bank with which you can take risks and buy different things in the market without any worry because you have a lot of uh, credit on your bank, you can go and do several things boldly, take bold steps financially. In the same way, when you have a very large open loop gain, then you have a, by sacrificing that large gain by some factors, you will be increasing the other features outside. That is what I wanted to show you. For example, the input resistance with closed loop gain will become much larger than the input resistance without feedback. The output resistance will become much large, much smaller than the output resistance without feedback, etc. Now, how do we show that? We, we can, we, I hope you can remember V input is V epsilon plus beta V output. That together only is that. Therefore, V epsilon is V in minus beta V output. That is what we already saw. So, V in is V epsilon plus A, A beta V epsilon because V output is A times V epsilon that is equal to 1 plus A beta V epsilon. Now, V epsilon is actually responsible for sending an I in through the R in the input resistance. So, V in is 1 plus A beta times I in into R in V epsilon I can write it in that way where R in is the input resistance and so V in by I in is equal to 1 plus A beta into R in where R in is the input resistance of the amplifier op amp. So, V in by I in is that new input resistance. I apply from my source V in and it results in a current I in. This current is now a reduced current because of the feedback voltage. Therefore, V in by I in should be much larger than what it was without feedback. That is exactly what you are getting at the right side. You can see the input resistance which was there before is multiplied by a very large factor which is 1 plus A beta the loop gain. So, the A beta is a very large number compared to 1 therefore, it is multiplied by a very large number and therefore, the effect of feedback is to increase the input resistance by several orders of magnitude 1 or 2 orders of magnitude. So, the ratio output resistance R in this I call R in C L, C L means closed loop. So, input resistance with closed loop is equal to 1 plus A, 1 plus A beta R in. So, you find the input resistance is increased by a factor which is 1 plus A beta that is the factor by which the gain was decreased. The feedback gain is A by 1 plus A beta it is decreased by 1 plus A beta times and here it is increased by 1 plus A beta times that is why we still go for negative feedback even though it reduces the gain it improves the input resistance. Similarly, it improves the output resistance also it can be shown R output with closed loop will be R output by 1 plus A beta. That means, output resistance is still reduced by this factor 1 plus A beta. The nonlinear distortions which are there due to non ideal conditions of the operation amplifier or any amplifier for that matter. So, every amplifier will have some contribution to this. So, V output is A times V epsilon which is actual output gain plus some unwanted distortion that has come about due to the amplifier. If I give feedback that part of the distortion also will be fed back that distortion also will be reduced in effect and therefore, the output voltage will therefore, give a value which is A by 1 plus A beta times V in which is due to the gain factor A f plus V distortion divided by 1 plus A beta. That means, it is a reduced distortion now and the reduction factor is again 1 plus A beta which is the number which we already met. So, you find the effect of feedback is also to reduce the distortion right. Now, having seen that let us try to look at a simple simulation of the circuit. So, on the screen you see there is a breadboard and you have a dual supply here. You have a voltage source which has got millivolts or volts input and you have a multimeter here you have to connect them and the circuit is shown at the right bottom bottom left most area corner. You, this is a circuit this is a non inverting amplifier with the signal source shown here voltage source shown here. So, if you want to try let us try a manual scheme. So, then you take the op amp and build the circuit. 
So you put it in the corresponding gap for example I take it and put it where the hand shows <coughs> and now the other resistor is also taken and connected. So we can connect the rest of the wiring. So it will show you where the connection is done. Now I am connecting the minus V minus terminal, the ground terminal, now the ground terminal and now completing the rest of the circuit. This is the way you will do it in the lab by wiring the circuit. Right now we connect the multimeter output terminals to 6 and also the ground point to the ground of the multimeter. So the multimeter is connected everything is now I have to connect the voltage source and you would find I have connect now the voltage source and the ground point of the voltage source. So the wiring has been completed. Now we will switch on the power supply and the voltage source and the multimeter everything is now ready and I will select millivolts. So if I increase this I can increase the millivolt source at input so I give about 100 millivolt and you can immediately see the output is 1.1 volt. So if I increase to 200 millivolt it becomes 2.2 volts why is it so because R2 is 10k R1 is 1k so 1 plus R2 by R1 is 1 plus 10 by 1 which is 11 so 11 times 200 is 2.2 volts 200 millivolt so 11 times 300 millivolts is 3.3 volts etc so if i if i keep on increasing you will see correspondingly the output voltage is also increasing proportionally by the gain factor right so having seen that let us now move on to the table and i have an actual circuit the same circuit wired on a breadboard and i will try to explain to you how this works so here you can see a multimeter which is connected as at the input terminal therefore uh, okay this is connected at the input terminal and it is connected to voltage and dc right it is voltage dc and this is a millivolt source this is a voltage source where i can change the input voltage using the dials from some 100 millivolt 200 millivolt to several volts and that is connected to the input of the uh, amplifier and I have a dual supply here and these are the three terminals for the plus minus and the ground the green one is the ground red one is the um, plus VCC black one is the minus VCC this is a dual supply and you also have one more multimeter which is for measuring the output voltage that is why it is called V output. So you have the circuit here and to clarify I have given the circuit also here in the circuit diagram you see here it is exactly the same non inverting amplifier the minus input is connected through R1 to the ground and the R2 is 10k here connected to the output and this is the voltmeter and you have the VCC plus minus and the ground connected this is the voltage source V in that is connected which is here. So if you look at carefully at the op amp there is the op amp 741 and you can see the 7 terminal is for the V plus that is connected to the red wire and the red wire goes to the plus of the dual supply and similarly the bottom 4 the pin number 4 is connected to by a small black wire to the negative terminal and this black wire goes to the negative V minus of the dual supply and the green wire is actually connected to the ground of the voltage source and this R1 and R2 are seen and it is very similar to what you saw on the simulation on the screen. Now if you look at the dial here I am sure you are able to see that it is about 100 millivolts this is about 100 millivolts that is obtained from this voltage source it is connected in parallel to the voltage source at the breadboard and therefore it reads 100 millivolt and after amplification you see some number here 
I am sure you are able to see that it is 1.13. So, the gain is R1 plus 1 plus R2 by R1 that is 11 and therefore 11 times 100 millivolt is 1.1 volt that is what you are getting here which is what also we got in the actual simulation. Now let me change the 100 millivolt input by using this dial to 200 millivolt. Now the input voltage is changed to 201 or so and now let us see what is the output voltage you observe in the V output voltmeter you would find that shows 2.25 the 11 times 200 millivolt. When I now increase the input voltage to 300 millivolts you can see on the dial it is reading 300 millivolts and correspondingly at the output voltage you see 3.37 volts. So you may be wondering why I am getting not exactly 3.3 not exactly 11 times but slightly larger than 11 times it is 2.25 or 3.37 etc and that can be very easily explained because this R1, R2 I have assumed to be 1K and 10K you know there is always a tolerance band that means the resistance need not be very precisely 100, 1K and 10K it can be very close to 1K within plus or minus 10 percent and 10K and therefore that tolerance variations where is the reason for a slightly different voltage that at the you get at the output. If I choose 1 percent or 0.1 percent resistors and put in the circuit you would find it will be an exact multiplication of 11 and you would get that thing. Otherwise you can actually take these two resistors measure the resistance value using the multimeter exactly and put that as in the formula 1 plus R2 by R1 and then multiply the input voltage you would find what you get is exactly the same as what you should get with this multiplication factor. Therefore, this is a very simple effective voltage amplifier very small input voltages like 100 millivolt comes out to be 1.1 volt it is amplified nearly 11 times. If I instead of 10 K I have chosen 100 K for the feedback resistor then the gain will be 101 times. So, you can by choice of resistors R1 and R2 R1 and R2 if I make it 100 K it will be 101 times if I make 50 K then it will be 51 times the output. So, the gain of the amplifier very easily controlled by simply two resistors and that way it makes very nice. So, if I have a, a input voltage like from a thermocouple or something then I will be in a position to amplify that small voltage by using a very simple configuration which is not at all expensive and with that I will be able to get amplification. You can see what I have done is now with reference to DC because the operational amplifier can amplify starting from DC the bandwidth of that starts from 0 frequency up to 1 megahertz for example when you have unity gain. But when you have a gain of 11 automatically the bandwidth will be reduced because the product bandwidth into gain should be a constant we will discuss this a little later and we will perhaps take later on an example where I will introduce instead of a DC I will introduce an AC voltage and vary the frequency and try to measure as we increase the gain how the bandwidth gets decreases decreased. So, we will also see that but for the present we are trying with a DC voltage source and we are measuring the input and the output using multimeters and you can see by just wiring the very simple circuit with two resistors in the feedback loop you are able to get a very good almost ideal voltage amplifier and you can also see the sign of the input voltage and the sign of the output voltage are the same this is also plus and this is also plus and that means it is a non inverting amplifier the output is in phase with the input. If I give plus voltage I also get plus voltage if I give minus voltage I will get minus voltage and therefore if, if I give a sinusoidal voltage I will get another sinusoidal voltage at the output which is in phase without any change in phase and therefore it is called non inverting amplifier and it is very close to an ideal voltage amplifier and it involves only two resistors in the circuit. So, having seen the demonstration I am sure you would have understood how uh, in a very simple scheme by just having an operational amplifier which is not very expensive and 
just couple of resistors which are also very cheap, you can form a amplifier which is a very very powerful amplifier in the sense it, the gain can be very easily modified. You, you should compare it with the situation before where you had the transistors, you cannot get this higher gain 11 or 100 or 50 in a moment's notice by just switching some resistors you are able to get different values of the gain and you would also observe that the same circuit if I have to do it with transistors it is much more complicated because the transistor is a more non-ideal device whereas an operation amplifier is very close to an ideal device and therefore you would find the design of the transistor amplifier is much more complicated and that is why you have to use a H parameter or a R parameter or a Z parameter and you have to have lot of approximations and then analyze the circuit and then design and then finally you may find that the design will not lead you to very high gains unless you have multiple stages. Of course, in the operational amplifiers also there are multiple stages, but everything is integrated into a very simple small area of silicon chip and the gain of the amplifier is 100,000 even when you buy as a one single device. Therefore, by just using couple of resistors externally you can make any value of gain and the larger the gain you sacrifice for example, from 100,000 we have come to 10 gain in the example. That means, you have sacrificed nearly 10 to the power of 4, a gain of 4 orders of magnitude you have decreased in the gain that will improve the input resistance by 4 orders of magnitude. So, your 2 mega ohm will now become 20,000 mega ohm, your output resistance 75 ohms will become 75 divided by 10,000. So, every one of the features of the amplifier will be improved by that 10 power 4 which is the value of the gain that you sacrificed. So, you find a simple feedback amplifier, negative feedback amplifier can lead you to a very effective good voltage amplifier by just simple connection with couple of resistors. So, we will see in the next lecture about the rest of the feedback configurations and they also how they lead to a very good close to an ideal current to voltage converter or voltage to current converter or current amplifier. Thank you.